good news is though, right now, we're beginning to see some light at the end of the tunnel. Some days it seems to be brighter than others, but nonetheless, we're beginning to see some, some light. Nonetheless, we need to remain vigilant. Changes are happening every day that we can think of. And I can assure you your council update or your council leadership rather is doing their best to stay on top of the things as they change. You gotta keep in mind, we're talking with national, we're talking with state, we're talking with local uh, consuls, we're talking with uh, our local health departments, uh, we're talking with our insurance companies. Uh, we are doing our best to stay on top of things so that as things change, we can get those communicated to you so that you know what's going on. And with that, we'll go ahead and start looking at the scouting ahead. Uh, we've updated our COVID-19 guidelines and they're in the scouting ahead guidebook. And uh, if those of you have looked at that already, you're aware that units now can camp. Uh, they're no longer limited to BSA resident camp properties. Uh, we still recommend you do it because we we're vigilant enough that we've taken care of things to make sure uh, that we're compliant with the regulations. No matter if you decide to camp somewhere else, that's all, all well and good. Just remember, not only should you also make sure that your units uh, are COVID-19 uh, adherent, but whatever the guidelines are for that particular facility, you're gonna to have to meet that as well. So carpooling is another big deal. Uh, it's no longer strictly limited. Uh, however, uh, we ask that you try to keep it down to a minimum. Uh, but again, if you're going to carpool, uh, masks are required. Uh, you've got to utilize some vent ventilation in your, in your cars. Uh, you've got to clean before and after. Uh, limit the amount of people in the vehicle as best you can. Uh, temperatures are to be checked before and after, but keep in mind, carpooling is now something that you can start to look toward doing. Uh, but again, remain vigilant. We don't want to just uh, go off and, and do these things on our own. Uh, and we, we need to make sure that we're following the guidelines. Uh, we need to make sure that we're looking out for not only our scouts, but we're looking out for our adult leaders as well. So you can find these updates. They were published on 3-1. Uh, and I think you can begin to see that uh, we'll uh, update those guidelines uh, as quickly as possible as we're uh, uh, able to do so. And as the guidelines change, uh, there is a lot going on uh, relative to what's going on in scouting at a local level. You know, day camps, summer camps, Pipestone, Order of the Arrow, all these things that we want to do, we're looking at, we're, we're mapping ahead, we're trying to make sure that we provide the best program that we can for scouts of all ages as we move forward. So be patient with us, continue to be patient with us. Uh, we'll get information out to you as quick as we can. But again, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Nathan, I'll turn it over to you for digitally delivered programs and what's going on there. Thanks, Bernie. And before I do so, I just want to underscore the point that while the guidelines have changed a bit and allow for more flexibility in selecting a uh, place to go camping or as it relates to transportation, as you do those things, all of the other guidelines still exist. Uh, so uh, Bernie mentioned it, just want to underscore that. The other tenting guidelines, cooking guidelines, those still apply wherever you camp. Plus, you may have additional guidelines that you need to follow for that facility. So just bear that in mind as you move forward. While we wait to um, uh, be able to do all those things that Bernie listed that we want to do, uh, we continue to offer digitally delivered programming. Cyber Sled Race, which we've talked quite a bit uh, on these meetings about in the past, is still open, still available. People are still signing up. So uh, if you have scouts that would still be interested in participating in that program, uh, it's a pretty neat one, uh, so they can still check that out. Additionally, the Home Scouting Adventure Club uh, continues to offer free content uh, for Buckeye Council families uh, that's uh, brand new content every month. Uh, so again, we've talked extensively about that, but we want to make sure you know that 
Uh, we're still providing new information, new resources for families uh, uh, each month through that program for free to the Buckeye Council um, membership. And then the Baden-Powell Institute, uh, which uh, I know lots and lots of folks on this meeting participated in, uh, that is still open as well. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance to check out the supplemental training, the course catalog, more than 30 courses available for you, um, that's still open. You can still register and be able to take part in all of those programs also. Coming up uh, this Monday is our Eagle Celebration, and we're very excited uh, to debut this program uh, on Monday uh, to recognize the Eagle Scout class of 2020, 124 Eagles and two uh, Summit Award recipients uh, will be recognized. Uh, we uh, just recently announced that Governor Mike DeWine is uh, recording a special message just for that group exclusively that will be a part of the program uh, that goes live on the 15th. Uh, if you haven't yet checked out CelebrateScouting.org, uh, we invite you to do so. Uh, already, even though the, if you go there and navigate to the Eagle Celebration, um, the program that will air on the 15th live uh, will, won't be posted until Monday. But already there's an interactive map where you can explore and learn about the Eagle Scout class as individuals. Uh, you can click through there by county. You can see photos and project descriptions and videos in many cases highlighting those Eagle Scouts. And we've also been sharing those out on uh, our Facebook page. Uh, please check that out. Please share those. These are wonderful stories of the positive things that Scouts have accomplished recently uh, that, we would, uh, that we want to not only share with the scouting community, but the bigger community beyond that. Uh, so please check that out. There's also other stories at CelebrateScouting.org that you can uh, invite other folks to check out, um, you know, that, that talk about positive stories about scouting that are happening. And, and uh, those are wonderful things to share out there. So uh, be sure to visit uh, on the 15th. Uh, it'll be about a 20 to 25 minute pre-recorded program highlighting the Eagle Scouts. Uh, it's shaping up uh, to be something really exciting. Come check that out. And it's going to live on there for quite some time. So you'll be able to come back to it. It's not a live thing to tune into. It does go live on Monday. Here's an example of what you'll find as you explore Eagle Scout stories. Um, you can see Shane here, uh, his photo, project description, and then a video. So we have those for as many Eagles who have been able to send us in that information, send that information into us we've been able to put that back on the site. So please do go check that out, celebratescouting.org. Back to you. Everybody wants to know about summer camp 2021. Everybody wants to know about Cub Scout day camps. Everybody wants to know about Weeblo's resident camp. Guess what? So do we. And we're working on it. That's the best thing I can tell you. Uh, we're working on the logistics, we're working on details, we're working on what we can do. Bottom line is what we can do today, hopefully is not going to be recognized as to what we're going to be able to do come May and June. So be patient with us. Like I've said before, things are changing on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, and we're going to stay up with it. The bottom line is we're going to put together a program that is worthy of you sending your scouts to summer camp. That's the bottom line. Same with Re Weeblo's resident camp, same with the day camps for Cub Scouts. We're gonna put the best program together. We're gonna, we're gonna work with whatever uh, guidelines are available at the time. And quite frankly, mm -hmm. they may change as we move forward. So let's just be patient. That's my biggest word of the day. Be patient, be patient, be patient. As soon as the de details can be released, we will release them to you. So as you can see on the screen there, they're still working on details as far as how the merit badges will be handled, as far as the registration is concerned and how they can be conducted. Those are changing again as we talk. Same with the, the details for the Cub Scout camping. Just stay tuned to what we're gonna be able to provide to you. And whatever I tell you today, don't write it down. Don't take it as gospel because I promise you between now and the time we hit the time frame as to when these activities are actually going to happen, 
we're pretty sure the details of what we can and can't do are going to change, but we can't tell you what those details are right now. So be patient, stay with us. And as you can see there, we're also working on summer camp, uh, frequently asked questions. And as soon as we feel competent enough that we have a good set of questions there that we can provide you, we're going to uh, get those out to you as quickly as we can. We are proceeding this year with the Good Turn Weekends. Uh, we ask that you uh, look online to get details of that, uh, but also there's a pre-event screening paperwork, and it's very important that you do this and fill it out before you go to seven ranges for the Good Turn Weekends. If you don't, then you're simply going to be in a waiting process, and people will have to stand in line and get this health screening done with the staff out there uh, at camp when it's done. Uh, but if you want to make itself easy so that you get in and out of, out of the registration, out of the admin building, off to your campsite so you can get things set up, go out there, take a look at this pre-event scheming paperwork, get it completed for every scout. And then when you get out to camp and turn it in with the folks that are doing the registration, it's going to be much, much easier for you. And it's going to take a whole lot less time. So if you're going out for the good turn weekends and the first one's coming up this weekend out of seven ranges, uh, then we have another one coming up in the months of April as well as May. So keep that in mind. Check the console calendar. Uh, if you haven't signed up already, there's still time to get that done, uh, not only for this uh, weekend, but also for uh, the next two months as well. So keep that in mind. We're moving forward. Good Turn Weekends are there for two reasons. Number one, they're there to help us get camp ready for summer camp. And they're also there for your scouts to complete their Good Turn project for their Pipestone Award. Pipestone, what's going to happen there? We cannot answer the question. However, we do know that the Pipestone Committee and those folks under the guidance of, of Greg are looking at it, our chief, and, and they're trying their best to figure out what it is we can do they're continuing to look at that just like we look at everything else. So that we get to summer camp, we're gonna be able to deal with this uh, and put on the best program that's available to us. So keep the faith folks, we're, we're moving in the right direction. Let's talk a little bit about future round tables. Okay, April round table. Uh, we've decided that that's gonna be conducted at the district level. So your district leadership will send out whatever details they need for you uh, to get on board, to be involved in it. Now, normally uh, on a console wide, uh, we're going to get together again in May because we would have done that anyways, whether we did it live or whether we did it by Zoom. Uh, but that's going to be our, our program kickoff. As of right now, we continue to think we're going to do that by uh, virtual uh, method. Uh, keep that in mind. So April roundtables will be by district. May Roundtable will get together once again and we'll do a console wide for the virtual program kickoff. By the time we get to August, we'll announce what roundtable we plans we have for the remaining of the year. Hopefully we'll just get it turned back over to what we do normally. However, uh, we'll just have to see what takes place. Keep in mind folks, things are changing and we're gonna change as best we can, as quickly as we can. Uh, to make our programs responsive and, and the best we can for our scouts. Thanks, Bernie. Um, and I'll just add, we are going to do some analysis. We've been doing this on an ongoing basis, but as we expect things to open up more over the summer, we'll be talking with you, getting feedback on what that future schedule looks like. Uh, is it just in person? Uh, is it some sort of a hybrid of in person and also uh, virtual to allow for uh, easy uh, access. Uh, we're open to all of those things and exploring those possibilities. We'll take the summer to make some determinations on this. All right, um, just a few other things before we open it up for questions. Uh, Law of Merit Badge Day, which has been a long running program, uh, very successfully with, with hundreds of kids each year uh, coming to uh, the courthouse in Canton. Uh, to really have a, a very um, immersive experience uh, working uh, right there in the, uh, the courtrooms, uh, working with attorneys and uh, other uh, officials in that process uh, to learn how uh, all the, everything that goes into how our courts work and our uh, system of law works. 
Um, we can't do that at the courthouse this year. So that's going to take place uh, at Camp Tuscazor during their Dover Dam days. Uh, you can find information at the Buckeye Council calendar uh, or at uh, tuscazor.org. So if that's something you have scouts interested in, you can find out more about those programs by visiting there. It's a great program. It'll be a little different this year, uh, but something that's worthy to check out. Uh, Silver Beaver recognition is coming soon. We're going to have uh, a similar to an Eagle celebration. We're going to have a Silver Beaver celebration. It's a, be a little different than that one, uh, but we're working on those plans and uh, we plan to uh, uh, try to have that happen in the month of April, uh, kind of similar to when we would have uh, our normal council annual dinner to recognize those worthy individuals. Uh, we've talked a, a few months ago about the new uh, National Camp Accreditation Program Standards for Short-Term Camping. What does that mouthful mean? It means that districts running camperies and similar overnight events have a set of standards to follow for those that have been uh, recently released, and thereby each district needs to have at least one person who's trained in those standards. We did a training uh, back in uh, December for that, um, December, I think it was mid-December, and we've got another one coming up in mid-April. So if your district has not had someone become trained for those standards, or you're looking for someone additional to have a backup or a, a group of folks, um, it'll be on April 17th at Zion Lutheran Church. Talk to your district executive uh, or district professional about getting registered for that uh, so that you can take part in that. This isn't something everybody needs to take. This is only a few people in each district. It's not a we're, we're not looking to train hundreds of folks for that. We don't have the facility set up to do so. Um, so this is, uh, you know, more for district leadership to consider who would you like to have trained on those standards. With that, uh, we're going to open up to your questions. So uh, I'll open up the chat to see if we've had any there. Uh, feel free to type those in um, or, uh, or you can unmute yourself and uh, ask them live if you'd like to do it that way. As you're doing that, Nathan, I'll simply add that I don't want to put my uh, my district commissioners on the spot, but I guess I'm going to. Uh, I emailed out to them uh, just within the last week an eight page document that I received from National uh, that uh, provides a plethora of information regarding scouting and the different websites, uh, different Facebook pages uh, and different webinars that they can look up relative to scouting and their programs. Uh, I asked our uh, district commissioners to share that with their unit commissioners and also to leaders uh, that they might think would be interested, but I thought I would highlight it here uh, just so that they know that that's out there. And if anyone is really interested in it, uh, contact their uh, uh, district commissioner and I'm sure they'll be willing to share it with you. Thanks, Bernie. A couple questions that have come across the chat. Um, one is about twilight camps. As we talked earlier in the, the program this evening, all of our cub camping plans, like summer camping plans to some extent, uh, are still being reviewed and finalized. Um, so we will have information going out that going out about those just as soon as we can. But no final determinations yet have been made on uh, twilight camps, day camps. Uh, those things. We are going to run a Cub Scout resident camp program as we uh, uh, typically have uh, at Akela. We'll be running summer camp as we typically have, although details have to be uh, shaped up on how all that's going to work as Bernie covered. District level Cub camping programs uh, are still being reviewed and determined. Uh, they themselves have the mo their own set of Ohio uh, sector guidelines to follow, and we're working with the leadership of those camps to make sure um, or to, to analyze how we can best implement that, meet the guidelines, be safe, and be able to, to have a program. We did just issue this week a Cub Camping Survey to all Cub Scout families and leaders. So uh, if you uh, haven't taken that, go check your email. We'll probably send another note about that. Give us some feedback on what you're looking for this summer. Um, we had a question about medical forms that was answered in the chat. Yes, it's the same medical form. The link's in the chat of where you can find that. Uh, we had a question about the pre-event screening form that was shown on screen um, and as it relates to Good Turn Weekends. That is the form you should use. There was a previous COVID-19 screening form out there as well. The one that we showed on this screen, the one that's linked in the chat, I'll ask Sarah, who 
just also link that Cup to Champion survey if you didn't take that. The link's in the chat as well. Sarah, if you could uh, drop in the link again to that pre-event screening checklist, uh, that form will greatly reduce your check-in process uh, this weekend or at the other upcoming Good Turn weekend. So we recommend that form. All right, any other questions um, that anybody had they wanna pop into the chat? Or like I said, you can unmute yourself and ask those. Okay, I'm gonna talk for just another few seconds. If you're, if somebody's quickly typing one in there, we don't wanna miss it. Um, we thank you for being a part of these. Um, we uh, ask that uh, uh, you continue, as Bernie said, to just have some patience as we put together these summer plans. Uh, it's not for a lack of attention to building them. It is greatly in flux, as you guys have seen, if you're paying attention to the news as to uh, how things are uh, potentially opening up or being uh, spoken to that they may open up soon. Uh, and so we're monitoring all those things and, and adjusting plans uh, to make sure that what we go with is going to allow for a maximum uh, experience for kids and for adults as close to what we would hope for as possible. <clears throat> uh, Toby asked about logging temperatures before the event. That's referenced in that pre-event screening form. So uh, it asks people to, uh, it's not a, like a two week log or anything like that. It asks people to take the temperature at home and then those get checked again upon arrival um, at, the, uh, at the camp. Okay, with that, uh, we are ready to go into our breakouts. So uh, as we've done, we are going to, uh, I'm gonna hit the button to open up the breakouts should see a pop-up come up on your screen to accept going to that breakout. If you registered late, as in after say 11 a.m. today, you're not automatically assigned to so just hang out here in the main session and we'll get you sorted out right away, okay? Or just as soon as we can. All right, let me find the breakout button. And we're off. <clears throat> 